we move on, more good news as Des was talking about this morning in the world of golf. Ireland looks set to host the Ryder Cup in 2026. The location, beautiful Adair Manor in County Limerick. A deal between the European Tour and the government was agreed just over a week ago and a formal announcement is expected today. Well, for more, I'm joined by Greg Allen, RT golf commentator Owen Corrie, editor of Travel Extra and morning, by man. Niall Collins, Fianna Fáil TD for Limerick County. Good morning to you all. Thanks for joining us. Straight to you, Greg. The last time we hosted the event, I think, here in Ireland was the K Club in 2006. It's definitely one of the world's biggest sporting events. How many people, Greg, are likely to descend on the beautiful village of Adair? I think the figures for Paris were about 270,000 for the week. So, <laughs> so there may need to be um, you know extra accommodation prov- provided. Uh, look, it's just an enormous thing to to have it. Um, I know twenty years sounds like a long time, but considering that there, it's only hosted every four years by by Europe because it's a biennial match. So every second year, it, it's it's staged. So one. You know, every two years goes to America, back to Europe. So this is a very tight cycle to have the Ryder Cup back in Ireland. And uh, J.P. McManus, when he did the refurbishment, it's more, much more than a refurbishment mm. of, of Adair Manor, as we know. It was basically, the course was built to stage big events and it was built to stage a Ryder Cup in particular, I think. You know, they laid fibre optic cabling and everything that you would need as an accessory for a golf course. And then the golf course itself is probably the best parkland course in Europe. Uh, I would say, I don't think there's too many candidates that would actually put themselves up against it. Now, Lynx courses, courses by the sea are a different thing because they have a a quality all of their own and a rarity all of their own. Uh, But in terms of parkland courses, this is you know, parkland perfection. It's it's an incredible course. How big a coup is it to get it, Greg? And how hard was the competition to get it? Not as hard as you'd think, because firstly, um, Adair Manor, in setting out their stall from the beginning, JP McMahon has said this at the uh, opening exhibition match in April of last year, when Rory McIlroy, Shane Lowry, Paul Carrington and Paul McGinley played in a lavish affair. Um, he, he, he didn't hide from the fact that, yes, they wanted the Ryder Cup. And I think his exact words were, it'll probably cost a pretty penny. I'm sure it has. Um, and so how difficult was it? U- European Tour had some issues with their previous bidding processes. And on this occasion, I think they decided that They were going to seek a venue and then approach them. Uh, And uh, J.P. McManus's Adair Manor was put in front of them because the chief executive of the European Tour was at that exhibition match, Keith Pelley, uh, back in April of 2018. So they were blown away by what was present. And and immediately it became obvious that this was not just a candidate. It was the front runner. And there was expressions of interest, uh, particularly by the Belfry in near Birmingham, uh, which has staged four previous Ryder Cups. Uh, It also has undergone a refurbishment, but nothing like the lavish refurbishment of Adair Manor. And look, from the very beginning, it was right out there. And eventually the European Tour and the PGA approached Ireland, the Irish government, because government support is critical to all bids. There are certainly, if this not a bid, it's certainly, you know, an, an approach. You cannot have a Ryder Cup without government support um, because there are things outside of the venue which have to be provided at, without going into great detail, but waste and, and fan zones and park and ride and all those type of things. So they all cost a lot of money. So there is a, a huge commitment by the government, tens of millions it'll run into, but the return is unbelievably multiples of that so there will be and also it's going to give the southwest region a huge boost in terms of its tourism which of course Owen is going to be able to fill us in on will it be great for golfers in terms of what it'll cost us as a nation versus what it brings in not just to ireland but obviously to adair a uh, huge amount of money and huge exposure. Um, there are very, we are not great at sporting infrastructure in Ireland. This is one of the few sports we can do. We, we don't have big stadiums that you know can stage multi-team uh, as, as soccer rugby events. We've discovered that with our bid to the Rugby World Cup was very full of problems. So golf is what we should be playing, uh, to excuse the pun, in terms of tourism. And really, it Ireland brings a little bit of a cachet in that um, it's got a very, very good brand image um, going back back to some of the courses that have staged, the European courses that have staged uh, the Ryder Cup and even the one that's due in 2022, there would be serious question marks uh, over what that will actually bring to Italy and bring to Rome. There are some suggestions that might land on us four years earlier as a result of that. But we are, uh, this is one thing that we can do really, really well. And you can overstate the worldwide influence of golf. When it comes to golf tourism, there is really only one market that matters. It's America. It's the easiest way into 
into the wallets of high spend middle class America that you can get and it's a card that the Irish in as I say we're poor on sporting infrastructure uh, we're strong on tourism but it's a card that we should be playing as often as we can and we I think the European Tour probably recognised that in coming to us Niall Collins obviously a very exciting day for Jerry. the only thing I thought Niall said sorry because I go to Kerry a lot from Dublin my god the bottleneck of a dare are we going to try and get a new bypass uh, good morning. Well, it's great news for us here in Limerick, and we're we're really delighted. We're not surprised because, um, in fairness to JP McManus, he's a very determined person. Um, he's huge connections, obviously, on the international sporting stage. And uh, once it was known that JP McManus was seeking to have um, this event held at, at his venue in Adair, um, there was a lot of anticipation that it would successfully come true. And it's great to hear that that it has. You're, you're right. The infrastructure will be key to it, and we're, we're reading in the in the reports this morning that, um, that the much wanted, long awaited Adair bypass will be part of the package. Uh, and in fact, I raised it recently with the local authority and Transport Infrastructure Ireland, and they're telling me that uh, lo and behold, there's a, a file sitting on Shane Ross's desk awaiting decision, which is actually holding up the, the planning um, process of that. Uh, New Adair bypass, which is part of a, a bigger road from Limerick City to the Port of Fines. But look, it's going to be huge. Um, it's really going to be um, a, a big showcase event where both Adair, Limerick, the Midwest, and indeed Ireland will be showcased right across the, the international um, sporting stage. And to think that the Ryder Cup is coming uh, to the parish just beside where I live is, is really, really immense. And the local people are very, very proud and will, everybody will. Uh, chip in, I know, and help to make it uh, the really true event, world class event that it's going to be. And obviously, as Owen Curry was saying, golf tourism, Nile, it's absolutely huge, isn't it? And that American market is key. Well, well, actually, you're, you're so right. Um, golf tourism for the last number of years has been growing exponentially year on year, uh, and it has gone, I suppose, under the radar to uh, people um, in Ireland who aren't tuned into the golf scene. But anybody who knows a little bit about golf will know that the, that the uh, spend that it brings in from the American market in particular, uh, as, as we've been hearing, um, is immense. And this will really showcase um, um, Adair, uh, the Midwest, uh, and I suppose we're spoiled for choice really around, um, around the region in terms of the golf courses that are available. Um, between the Hinch, where the Irish Open was staged recently, you have... Dunbeg, obviously the Trump Resort there, you have the Ballybunion course, you know, so you have a network of courses in the region um, which are market, marketed to the United States as a package in terms of um, to, tourism, inward inward tourism and inward investment. So this again, I think, will we'll just bring it to a whole new level and it's really, really exciting times and I think there's really huge credit uh, due to everybody associated with it, but in particular, as I say, J.P. McManus, who's uh, who's championed this since he took over the ownership of the Adair Manor Complex about five years ago. It's a really unique um, venue, as you know. It was actually a 17th century um, manor, which was built in the 17th century and uh, added to in the 19th century. It was the seat of the Earl of Dunraven, and it came into the ownership of this J.P. McManus and his okay. family about five years ago, and they've done a fabulous rebuild of the course and indeed a refurbishment of the manor building itself. OK, so, thanks, Nile. Final word to you, Greg Allen. You love your sport, right? You are the expert in golf. 2026, who's going to be playing? Do we know? Well, that's a good question. I mean, Shane Lowry will be in his late 30s. He's yeah. a, and that's actually his prime territory for most golfers. So let's fingers crossed that it's going to be Shane Lowry involved. Rory McIlroy is only going to be 37. So we've got two great candidates there already. Question is, who will be the captain? There's loads of candidates, Henrik Stenson, Pitt, possibly even Graham McDowell. They'll all be in that sort of territory of 45 to 50 in age. So you know, you never know, there could be an Irish captain, but uh, that's to be determined. It's a long way to go, seven years. Well, listen, Greg Allen, Owen Corrie, Thank Matt Collins, thanks so much for coming this morning and chatting to me. We'll take a break. Today with Miriam on RTE Radio 1.